Now, welcome back. We're doing the just the second session, uh, the continuation of the book ODM, so Object Document Mapper using Flask Engine, Mongo Engine, and Mongo Engine. Now we're going to move on to the main part. So we're going to create the actual create, read, update, and delete functions uh, using Mongo Engine. So we're going to create a number of templates. Now there's the front end stuff. We have the base HTML, which has a navigation bar, flash messages, fixed footer. And that is an import then when we use uh, into index.html, which is the main page, and then add book and edit book as well. Now each of these are, are linked to a number of functions or endpoints within app.py. We will go through that in greater detail later on. Now the functions we're using then, uh, Mongo engine functions, are book.save to save a book, in other words, a, a document, book.objects to read or search, that gets all the objects in the book uh, collection, book.objects.get with a parameter means that we're getting a single uh, document based on the book ID and update a book. What I generally do is, is book.update and then using the um, pointer to a dictionary that has all the form fields. And then to delete a book, it's simply book.delete. And that's essentially uh, as simple as it gets when using the Mongo engine CRUD, CRUD functions. Let's have a look then at what this means. So we're already, we've created a minimum viable flask. Uh, we've um, installed in terms of the Mongo engine configured in connection, which is this piece here. Uh, and then we've also created the, uh, the book class with the, um, instantiated the DB document. Um, so title, so with the fields, we have the, the type of fields, default values, max length. Uh, so for example, for the title field, the max length is 250. For author, the max length is 250. The max length for year, the integer field is four, and ISBN is 13. And then this particular here, creation date is whenever a new document is created. In other words, a new book is added, the date and time of the creation of that document is added here. And there is something special as well as we look at this int field here for rating. Basically what we're saying is the values can only be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 for the rating. Another thing which is important to note is the addition of the meta tag. Now the meta tag does a number of things. So for example, the auto create index, here we're telling Mongo engine to tell MongoDB to create the object IDs automatically, dynamically. Now this is true by default anyway, but for me, this is a paranoia setting. This is just me making sure that it does do that. The index background, here we're telling it to update the indexes in the backgrounds. What does that mean? Let's say we create or add a thousand documents. Now what would normally happen is the thousand documents would be created. They would each be given a, uh, a unique object ID. However, the application will be waiting for that to finish before continuing. By setting index background, sorry, <coughs> index underscore background to true, we're saying, please do all that in this thing in the background. So as soon as you're told to create those documents or updates, update those documents, give us give the application control again and perform the indexing in the background. Here, indexes, we can define, so the default index is the object ID, but we can add our own. In this case, I'm saying I want to use title as well as an index to speed up searches using the title. And what I'm also saying here is I want the, when we read the collections, so the collection in the database could be in any order. However, when reading this um, database collection, I want you to order them in uh, ascending order by, uh, by title. So A, B, C, D, and so on. 
that which means that when I uh, read from the database, I don't need to add the dot order by function. So these are things that can be useful to use or useful to know. Okay. What we're going to do next then is this is kind of the, the, the main part of it. We are going to build, or first of all, create the read function, then the create function, then the update and delete functions uh, together. So starting with the read function because it is the easiest function to use. But before I do that, because I don't, I not only want to show you the Mong or the, the Python uh, code or the, the Mongo statements, I want to show you the front end part as well. We need to add a templates directory. Templates. So if you remember here, when we instantiate the fast application, we really only need underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. However, because I'm paranoid, <laughs> I define that my static folder is static and my template folder is called templates. We don't really need that because these are the default values. However, I want to make sure that they're set. So what I'm saying is my templates directory then contains my Jinja, my, my HTML templates. And as luck would have it, I have actually created a few. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the templates that I have uh, created previously. And I'm just going to paste them here to use. So what I've done is I've named them C4, C5, C6, and they will correspond to the uh, Python code that is used as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just copy my C4 file, paste, there we go. I'm going to do a control A, control C, and paste that into my app.py. So what I've done here is I have, so we have our class, which is nothing strange, but I've updated the home page function. I've added a few additional routes. We have the default route, which is just the name of the site, slash index, slash index.html. And then what I've done here is I'm saying that from the book collection, I want to read a number. Uh, I want to get all the book objects. So all of the, the documents that are there relate in the book collection. And I would add that to this variable, books, underscore pagination. And then also I have just a print the count of the number of books that are in there. And then this return, this renders the template index HTML, which we will look at in a moment, providing the variable books pagination, which we have here, to that template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all, copy base Actually, let's do both base and HTML, copy, paste. So I've created these so you know we don't need to um, watch me uh, create these from scratch because that's a bit like watching paint dry. So base.html and rename this one index.html. Now, those of us who have worked with uh, Jinja and templates before, we know that the base template has the base functionality. In other words, the fe these features that are in here, the statements, are imported into our other templates. And what this does, essentially, in this case, loads the uh, Google fonts, the material icons that I, I use for the form fields, navigation bar, materialize 1.0.0 CSS and then my own style.css file in the body we have the navigation bar so at the moment we only have home um, and we may and then uh, for the hamburger menu as well for smaller devices uh, we also have the home tag this covers the flash messages with categories 
So whenever there is a flash message, it will be handled by this piece of Jinta template code. And here we have the footer, it doesn't do very much. And then obviously the scripts. So we have the materialized 1.0.0 JavaScript. We have my local uh, initiation of all the materialize uh, functions that I use. And then also the flash message timeout that I use, uh, that I created, okay? That means then in index.html, it uses the base HTML and adds the following content in the block content. So I'm not gonna go through this in any great detail. This is covered in the course. But what I wanna say here, what I've done is I create a table. So I have the headers, title, author, year. So let's have a look at what that might look like in a moment. And what I also do is, so remember in the code here, app.py, Let's save this, by the way. Um, it collects all the in book instances in the database, assigns them to this variable. This variable is then provided to the render template variable with the same name. Sorry. That is then used here. Okay. So for every book, single book object in books pagination, uh, I get the book title, book author, and book year. And then this bit of ginger magic provides me with a alternate white and blue gray light and five background, just to make it easier to read the table. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So there we go. Now I've already pre-populated this database with some sample data. So it read the database and provides us in this table with an alternate white and blue gray background. So this is how easy it is to create the read function using Mongo Engine. Okay. It doesn't get any simpler than this. So let's move on then to the next function. So I'm just going to copy what I have. There we go. C5 in CRUD. And let's do Control A, Control C, and then Control A, Control V. And now then, close that. So C5 then, I need to update my base. And the reason is that I've added a navigation component. So let's go to base HTML. The base component, what I've added here is this navigation piece. In other words, add book. And the same to the hamburger menu for smaller devices. Okay, save that. And then we also need the add book template. So I'm gonna copy that, paste and rename it. Now the add book is this form field here with title, author, year, ISBN, book description, uh, call, um, rating, and so on, as well as the add a book button, okay? So let's save that. So what it does is the add book function gives us, renders the add book HTML, in other words, this form field here. So let's have a look at what that looks like. When I click here, it should update. There we go. So add book. So when I click add book, this form field, this form here with the fields corresponds to this here. Okay. And that is rendered by this. Now, when we add a book then, so let's go to the page. I'm gonna do something simple. ABC, uh, myself, 20, bogus ISBN, it's a good book. I add it, book was saved. And we can see the book was saved there. Okay, 
So that function works. So what ha what's happening in the background? Sorry. Let's have a look. Now, what we do is this. When I click the save uh, button, it creates a new book instance from the book class. In other words, this class here, okay? With the following fields. And it assigns the values that I've used in the form to the following variables. And we now have the book object here with those values. And then all we need to do is a book.save. So a book save function. That's how easy it is to see a save and in fact create a book using the Mongo engine um, statements. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so that's how easy that is. Let's move on. The next we want to look at is updating. So I'm going to just copy my code here. Make me things a bit easy. I will do a control A, control C, and just paste that into app.py. I'll go through what actually has been added. Now, so I need to update index. So let's do that first. I'll explain what it is I'm actually doing. So index.html, we save that. What I've done is I've added to the table a, an edit function and a delete function. So a link to edit books and a link to delete books using the book ID of the book. So that's what my index.html looks like. I also then need the edit book template. So I'll just copy that. And paste and rename that edit book and in here you can see the form field is uncannily similar to the one we use in add book there's not much actually they are the same so I could potentially have used the same template let's save app.py now what this does is let's have a look at the um, the edit book function first. So here, the edit book function gets the book ID. So let's have a look at what, what happens. Uh, I will just reload this first, and we'll see then that I've added the delete link and the edit link. So let's take the book that I added, ABC. If I hover over that, if you look at the lower left corner, you can see that I have the URL with the unique object ID to that book. So that has another object ID, that has another object ID, that's another, and so on. If I click on this, it then gets the book with that object ID. So it gets the, the values, the fields, and populates the fields of this form, of this update book form. Let's look at the code here. What we can see is the book ID is provided there as a uh, parameter and it is used here when we search for the book with the relevant ID. So book.objects.get where the book, where the ID is equal to the book ID that we've provided and save that to book. That is then used to when we render the template, edit book, which is here. And as you can see, when we go through this, uh, we have the value for that field is book title. The value for the author field is book author. The value for the book year. And this is taken directly from the, the document of the database. Now, when we, in here, let's say we change the title, ABC123. And let's say the book rating is better. Let's say it's eight. I click update book. The book is updated and we see we have A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. So that is actually actually updated now. So what happens then, if we look at the background, or look at the code, when we click add book, this function is called. So the book ID is provided as a parameter. Again, we do 
book dot objects dot get get in other words that single document with an ID of, of book ID that we passed it then get the form fields so request dot form dot get from title author year ISBN and save them in this dictionary called fields then what we essentially do I just jumped to this we do a book dot update with a pointer to the fields dictionary that's how easy it is to update uh, a document in using Mongo Engine. So essentially, we uh, do a book search first for the book with the relevant ID that we clicked on. Then we get the form fields and save them to the dictionary called fields. And when we then save it, we or update it with book.update and then with a pointer to the field to, to the dictionary called fields. That's how easy it is to do an update. Now a delete, as we'll see, when I go back to here, I delete what I created. When I hover that, you see down in the lower left corner of the URL with the uh, unique object ID. I click on that. The book is deleted and it's gone. We can see it's no longer there. What happens then in the background is that again, we we are part well we're past the parameter sorry there we do a book search so give me the book from the book collection so book.object.get where the id is equal to the book id save that to book and do a book dot delete so the book object then is deleted so that will then delete the document in the mongodb database so that's how easy it is to do a delete so we've covered Create, read, update, and delete using Mongo Engine. And we could essentially say, you know, we're done and dusted, let's let's move on. However, I want to add a few additional components to this. But before I do that, I'm going to do a so crud functions using mongo engine and then we are going to just stage all changes commit all changes and push what i'd like to do now as well is uh, so what i've done is the code works locally in my machine. I've pushed my code changes to my GitHub development branch. I now want to uh, do a pull request. So I click on this icon here. I want to target the master branch. I want to use my commit message as my last message. And here's my pull request too. So that what it does is you can see that I've done two uh, pushes or commits to my GitHub development. They are all included in this merge pull request to the master uh, GitHub branch. And again, looking at Heroku, it is building my Heroku review app for ideally one of my team members to test to make sure that the functions I've added actually work on the Heroku platform. So just wait a sec, wait for this to finish. Okay, the new URL. Just make sure that goes green before I do anything. There we go. Dismiss. And before I do anything, I want to make sure that there's nothing funky in the logs. And that looks okay. Open up. And hey presto, here we go. Our application, our read and create functions um, on Heroku. Now, obviously, I haven't populated that database, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to use MongoDB Compass. So what we can see here is that we have a book ODM2 dev, but we don't have a book to book ODM2 rev. When I do a refresh, we have book ODM2 rev. So that's created by Mongo Engine. I have done nothing beyond defining the URI. So the book is uh, Collection is empty. We will import data. I will import my sample books. 
uh, import done you see they're loaded and now if I click home here we have the books with the edit and delete functions so we now have all our functions uh, working and I can actually add a book let's do uh, book ODM uh, myself one two three four four five six seven eight nine zero one two three it's not necessary it's an excellent book add book and it is here so we've added a book as working on heroic review app I can update that book and say that I wasn't quite as enamored by it so I just give it a five and the book is updated and I can then delete the book the book is deleted it's gone so we now verify that create read update and delete works on the heroic platform I close that down I can go to my pipeline looking good okay now so happy with that what I can say is just gonna be lazy and say build run and test successful actually helps I can spell successful um, of crud functions add that comment now because it's me <coughs> sorry I'm the only person who's has access to these repository I can't click appro click approve only another team member can do that if there is another team member but what I can do as me is I can do a merge quest and create merge commit so what this does now is it will merge my github development code with github master what it also does is if we look at Heroku is it kills let's just refresh that properly it kills the Heroku review app and because I have auto deployment of my GitHub master repository to Heroku staging, it uh, deploys another Heroku staging. Another thing that I want you to note, actually wait until this is to finish. So it's okay. This here, you remember the dot slug ignore file? So what it says, the files starting with capital C, I don't, do not want to load them from GitHub to my Heroku platform. So that file, dot slug, slug ignore, make sure that that doesn't happen. The 16 files have been removed, okay? Now again, I want to make sure that there's nothing funky in the log. Looks good. Open the application and, hey, there we go. But again, empty database. So let's have a look at our MongoDB compass. Let's reload that. And all of a sudden we have book ODM2 staging. I've done nothing. The URI is defined, Flask Mongo engine, uh, Mongo engine just goes, hey, the database doesn't exist with this name. Let's create it. Oh, uh, there's a collection here called book, doesn't exist, let's create it. But I obviously want to uh, add a bit of data. So I'm just going to again, load my sample book data import done see and now when I reload hooray there it is with the same functionality so let's then say I've run all the tests I'm very happy I then promote this to production so my stable code and what it does is it copies essentially the staging slug to production and again I want to make sure that there's nothing funky in the logs. We look at that state change from starting up looking good. It should then work. Perfect. And again, though, because I haven't um, added any data, we can see if I refresh, we then have book ODM2 prod. It's empty. However, let's add a bit of data. Import. and done okay reload so there we go 
in production. Perfect. Now I could leave it like this because now we've gone through the um, configuration of Flask Mongo Engine and Mongo Engine. In other words, installing it, make sure we load the right libraries or extensions, uh, and then gone through the functions both from a front-end perspective with the templates, but also about the, uh, the, the application perspective with the Python code to create, read, update, and delete books. However, I'd like to continue with a few additional components. So what I'll do is I will stop this video now and then we'll create a third video. Okay, bye-bye.